Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 27th of July 2011. 62 years ago this day, a new comet was seen in the skies above England. The trivia question is, what was the name of that comet? The answer, as always, will be given at the end. I'm willing to bet that nobody gets this one. Well, hooray, we have some flares. If you look at the GOES X-ray plot, you can see in the last 24 hours, we've had three fairly substantial sea flares. All of them are from region 1260 which, as we shall see, it seems to have grown substantially. Also, as a result of this activity, the X-ray background has risen to the B5 level. We have a stark contrast to yesterday. We have lots of new regions. Region 1260 has grown, and the new region coming over the northeast limb has been labelled 1261. Yesterday I mentioned there was a new region coming up in the northwest, ahead of region 1260. It has actually grown overnight, but has still not yet been numbered. There are also two new regions coming over the southeast limb, which may turn out to be substantial. So let's take a look at the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours. First the sunspots from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And I would like you to concentrate on the northeast with those two major regions. First 1260 and then the even bigger region which is 1261. I've made a much more detailed movie of these two regions. First take a look at region 1260 where the number of spots grows and becomes more complex as time goes by. Now whether a region 1261 is growing or just becoming more visible as it rotates onto the disk is a matter of debate and we'll have to wait for a day or two to see what is going on. In the magnetic movie I'd like you to concentrate on region 1260. Watch how the magnetic field develops, particularly mixing up the positive and negative polarity which is a good sign for producing flares. One way of determining whether an active region is going to be more or less flare productive is to look how dynamic it is. I'd like you to concentrate on the transition region movie for regions 1260 and 1261 and see which one you think is the more dynamic. Now I'd like you to do the same thing for the low temperature coronal movie. Compare regions 1260 to 1261 and see which you think is the most dynamic. The interesting question is, did you get the same answer? For the high temperature coronal movie, once again I'd like you to focus on the coronal holes. That large coronal hole is now moving into the western hemisphere and in the next 24 to 48 hours should start affecting us. Also we should have fairly prominent coronal holes in the, at the two poles and we don't at the moment. According to some this has ramifications for the intensity of the upcoming cycle. In the SOHO coronagraph data we see a lot of activity off the northeast limb presumably associated with these two regions. The ACE data tells us about what's going on in the solar wind and we see that the temperature, density and velocity of the solar wind has all been steadily declining for the last 24 hours. The high energy electron flux has also dropped a little more in the last 24 hours as well. There may have been a hint of a spike in the proton flux first thing this morning. However, it's just as likely to have been a statistical fluctuation. Either way, it's not a particularly significant event. The NOAA 15 data show us that the auroral zone is a lot quieter than it was yesterday and the KP index has been varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the x-ray background is at the B5 level, the sunspot number is at the ridiculously low value of 30, somebody can't count, radio sun intensity is at 94 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is at 420 kilometers per second with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is we have a high chance of getting more sea flares, now that's a bit of a cheat because since I started doing this uh, video I noticed we've had a couple more of them. The chance of getting M flares is improved but still is relatively poor. The chance of getting X flares is very remote. The sunspot number should go a lot higher. The chance of getting coronal mass ejections is still good. The solar wind speed should remain low. But the chance of getting a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is very poor. In the longer term we have nothing new coming over the East Limb in the next couple of days. So we're going to have to rely on the development of these existing regions uh, for improved activity, which doesn't seem to be very much of a problem for them at the moment. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today, go to my channel. They're all listed there. The answer to the trivia question is the de Havilland Comet. It was the first flight of the world's first jet liner. I didn't think anybody would get it. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.